All right, how's it going, y'all? So today I have actually a pretty interesting switch from fs.com that is an eight port gigabit PoE plus unmanaged switch. And the really interesting part about it is the features you get out of it for an unmanaged switch while also having the really, really low price of $69 in the US. So that is really impressive target to hit for a switch of this class. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about that in a little bit here. But the reason I'm actually really interested in it is it's really kind of in a class of its own here for the most part. I mean, just shopping around, trying to find a, an equivalent switch for cheaper that just has the same specs, not even like the enterprise build and everything, I wasn't really able to do, which is pretty impressive considering how fs.com does tend to work for more. They, they do do the small business, but more of like the managed side of the small business, not like an ultra, ultra low cost switch like this, which I was pretty impressed by. All right, so this right here is the S1900-8TP gigabit unmanaged switch from fs.com. They did send it to me for free, but this is a totally unbiased review. They've sent me other stuff in the past as well, and they've sent me some Fiverr. All that's still unbiased review, but they did send it to me for free, and I do not have to send it back. And so by specs alone, I've been very kind of impressed by the switch. So we'll, we'll go ahead and open it up and talk about some of the features it's got and why it's kind of impressive, especially given its class. So it comes in a very enterprise build. And the first thing that you can notice that makes it different than a lot of cheap switches is just right on the back right here. This right here is an AC input. And I know a lot of you don't really care about that, but it says a ton about a company when they are putting an AC input on the back instead of a DC input. Because when you have an AC input, that means the power supply is built in tends to be a lot more expensive for the companies because they just can't buy out the very cheapest power supply possible and bid it out later on. They actually have to go through and get one built into the entire motherboard. And it also tends to be just higher quality. And it also is so much better for rack mounting. And so for anybody who's ever gone through and actually gone through and tried to rack mount a switch or any enterprise gear that has DC input and therefore requires a really annoying wall wart or power brick that goes through and converts your AC current out of the wall into DC input for the switch external to the switch, knows that those things are so hard to rack mount because those power bricks are heavy and there's nowhere to put them on a rack. Racks are not really designed to have those put anywhere. And so the best thing you can do is like zip tie it to the side half the time. And it's just very, very hard to work with and is going to make your setup a lot more messy, which is not just for cleanliness and looking good, it actually can make it a lot harder to service down the line because you've got these cords going everywhere. In general, also external power supplies do tend to fail more than internal built ones because they are generally built by the cheapest possible bidder. And so they're not necessarily the best quality, though they are at least a little easier to replace in that sense. But it says wonders about a product whenever it has a inbuilt AC power supply, because that means everything's internal and it's just a lot cleaner. So by having just an AC power in, it makes it so much easier and it really shows that this switch is designed for really enterprise gear and they're not just really cheaping out on it. And so that is one thing I did really appreciate right off the bat. The other thing is it's very much designed to be rack mounted. You can see the form factor here. It is one U tall. It is very much designed to be rack mountable and it's a very clean build for the entire thing. Now, I was really surprised to see all of these features, specifically in a switch that is so cheap. I mean, $69 for a PoE Plus switch with eight gigabit ports on it is really not something I was able to find just scouring the internet. It also has a 130 watt PoE budget across all those ports, which is pretty much going to get you whatever you need most likely. I'm not running even half that right now, and I've got a way larger PoE switch. So this thing is honestly, I think it's great value for the money, at least by specs alone. The other thing it also comes with is on the back here, it's also got a grounding pin. And so what you do in more enterprise switches, especially when you're worried about ESD and things like that. So you go through and have every single one of your components double grounded effectively to the actual chassis of the rack. And then that rack chassis will also be grounded basically to the ground of the server farm, wherever you're at. And so that way there's less static buildup and everything's effectively neutral. So if you had a fan in here that was going through and actually building up some static electricity, it would constantly just be dispensing that static electricity to the foundation of the building and therefore to earth, keeping everything the exact same neutralness. 
And so you won't get sparks, which you don't want, especially with stuff running for a very long time. It can just wear out components or cause issues down the line or also just cause signal degradation. So having everything grounded is something you generally want in larger enterprise environments. I don't really do it. Generally rack ears will ground something fairly well because the chassis is generally grounded, but it's always good to see that just to make sure it's a feature. It's cheap to add for manufacturers, but the only ones who rarely ever do are people who are thinking these are going to be actually set up for enterprise. Now also in the box, it comes with your rack ears if you want to go through and rack mount it. The hardware as well as little sticky feet pad. So if you did not want to rack mount this, instead you want to put it desk mounted, it can really do either. So you've got the four cutouts there for the four different feet. That means that it'll not just slide around on desk or scratch a table. And so you've got little feet on there and the rack mounting hardware you need to actually put it up on a rack. Then you've got your standard, I don't even know what this cable's called, but it is your really normal AC power cable. So it's got your standard input port. There's, there's a spec for that, I don't know what it is. And finally, that grounding gear right here. So what you would do is you'd go through, you'd attach this piece right here to the actual switch. It's got the little screw on the back right there. You screw that to this, and then the other side of it, you actually will screw to your rack. And so that way, the current's always being dispersed and it's just a lot safer. Once again, I don't run with it, but for enterprises, that stuff's important. So as you see, you actually get pretty much everything you'd expect when you're buying a enterprise grade switch in the box. I mean, they've pretty much got all, which is one of the things that really excited me about the switch is it's got such a low price point while still not cheaping out anything. So whenever you've got hardware that is just set up in such a low price point like this is, you've got to ask yourself, where are they making their margin, right? So they've got to go through and they're finding some way to cut some corners, right? Because you just don't get a price point like this with having everything be the upper echelon features. So obviously there's something there that is cheaping out on. And so probably the biggest thing for this switch specifically is it is a purely unmanaged switch. So that means that there are no advanced layer two capabilities. There's no link aggregation. There's no VLANs. There's none of that built into the switch. And so that is going to be a big decision point for a lot of people. There is the bigger brother of the switch that has all the smart manage plus features. At least that's what Netgear would call it. It's got your link aggregation. It's got your VLAN tagging. It's got all those features, but it is 130 bucks. So it's almost twice as expensive as this switch is. And so that is probably the biggest attraction for this switch. And so companies who are looking at this, are going to be in one of two categories. They're going to go, I don't need any Smart Manage Plus features at all. I literally just want to be able to throw some PoE cameras on this and have it hooked up to the rest of my network. If that's the case, this might be the perfect switch for you. But if you're somebody who really needs VLANs, VLANs are probably going to be your biggest thing, then this switch is not going to be able to do them. Obviously, if you've got another VLAN switch and you just need all of the items on the switch, to be in the same VLAN, that's really easy. You just tag the port that's going into the switch as a specific VLAN, and then every single item behind this will go through and just automatically connect as if it's on that VLAN, because that's how VLANs work. And so that is an option, but if you need to be able to have different tagged VLANs on one box like this, you're not gonna be able to do that. And so that's probably the switch's biggest downside, but there's nowhere else in this price point that also has those Smart Plan Manage Plus features in a PoE Plus switch, especially not with the PoE budget that this thing has and the fact that they're all PoE Plus ports. And so now there's the other side of it that is the fan noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and you'll be able to listen to it. Once again, I say this every time I do a switch review that has any kind of noise. Noise over video does not come across. There can be something that sounds dead silent in video that's actually really annoyingly loud and the vice versa is also possible where you have something that just is really loud on video, but you can hardly hear it in person. It just has to do with the way that mics are picking up frequencies that human voices are emitting. And so that is one big issue you've got to kind of keep into account. I'll go through and I'll just really describe it in terms of other switches and how comfortable it would be next to you. All right, so now we'll just go ahead and plug it in. And so right off the bat, it has fan. It is not a silent switch by any means. 
but it's also really not that loud. This also might be a frequency that actually gets really picked up on the mic, but in case not, it automatically turns on the fan even under zero load. And so that probably means it doesn't have an intelligent fan curve in there. And so it's just always running the thing. That is so much cheaper for manufacturers to implement. They just know, okay, it'll always be cooled down. You don't have to be guessing based off of PoE load and not based off temperature sensors but we can go through and try to load this thing up with PoE power to see if it increases. All right, and so I just went through and plugged in a couple of things. I've got a rear link camera and a Unify Wi-Fi 6 access point. That's actually PoE plus, and the fan noise has in no way increased. So it's safe to say that it's probably just a steady fan curve for the entire thing, which is good. But that also means you, it won't run silent if you're not using the PoE power, which is a downside for some people. But if you're throwing this to rack, it's not that big of a deal. It's quite quiet. But for something like if it was next to you on a desk, eventually you drown out, but it would be annoying, definitely. And so now with that out of the way and we show that it does actually provide PoE plus power without any issues, we'll just go ahead and unplug this just because I don't know how loud it is on video and I'd like for you to be able to hear me. So that is probably the switch's biggest downside is the fact that the fan curve is always there. So it's just, anytime it's powered on, the fan is just running. And so those are the two big downsides of the switch. You've got a fan noise that is non-zero and would probably be a little bit too annoying to have on a desk next to you 24 seven. But if it's going to be in a closet even like 10 feet away from you in open air, you're probably not gonna be that annoyed by it, but you would be able to hear it if it was in the same room with you. And the fact that it is a unmanaged switch. Those are the two things that make this switch able to be at the price point that it is. And so if you're okay with those two things, then this is a great value. For 69 US dollars, you are getting 130 watts of PoE power and also eight gigabit ports. That is a very good deal for a enterprise built unit. You don't have to deal with wall warts. You don't have to deal with all that unnecessary stuff. It rack mounts really cleanly and it is very much designed to be thrown in an enterprise environment. That is generally what FS.com produces. And so I've been very impressed by this switch. And so if you can get over those two things and for any POE switches, you're going to have some fan noise because of the AC to DC converters. But if you're able to get to those two things, then this switch, I don't think has a single competitor out there that is in this price point. I think it's great value for money and it seems built very, very, very well. Now, obviously I've not deployed a hundred of these and seen how long they last, but from my testing of this thing, I've had zero issues with it. The biggest negative I can find with it is the fact that it's unmanaged and the fact that it has fan noise. But even with that, I think it's great value for money. All right, well, that's going to be it for this overview. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.